Now that you have an object that you're able to model, add color to, and animate, you may wish to go ahead and render that, that model. Rendering in Blender allows you to export a final image with all lighting effects, movement, and whatnot applied to create either a final image, movie, etc. So let's look at some of the basic properties. First off, the rendering all references the camera, which then views the scene, which is lit by the lights within your scene. By default, there is a single lamp here. And we won't play with these until the next video, so for the time being, let's just look at the render settings. First off, to render an image, or to view what the camera sees, simply click Image underneath the render panel. And you can see we have a gray background with a single gray cube, which is being lit from the top right side, like so. If we then hit Escape, we can go back to our regular view and play with the settings. First off, you can change your display from full screen to a new window or to an image editor. Personally, I prefer the image editor because it allows you to see your rendered image in this view while keeping all your settings here to continue adjusting those settings. I'm going to skip over the layers for the time being because these are a bit more complicated and it has to do with compositing. You can check out a lot of more info on these via Roger Wiki's compositing book or other tutorials on online for Blender. The next thing let's go ahead and move on to is the dimensions. With the dimensions, obviously, you can change the image resolution, you can change the frame range and frame rate for use during animation, and you can also change the aspect ratio. For the time being, you can also see that we have a series of presets for different TV formats during animation. You can also add custom presets if you wish, if there is a certain format that you export to a lot. We can adjust the resolution, as with any slider in Blender, by left-clicking and dragging, and moving our cursor back and forth, or control clicking on that field to put in a specific resolution, such as 1024, hit tab, go to the next field, by 768. And we want to perhaps render that at 100% its size, which then if we render, we can see we're rendering at a full 1024 by 768. Next, go, going on past dimensions, we can toggle that down just to hide it. And we can see we've got some anti-aliasing features to keep nice smooth edges, which if we render this, if we uncheck it and render it, you'll see the differences here. It's not easy to look at and not enjoyable. So this keeps our render looking nice and nice and smooth without any of these jagged edges. You can increase this up to 5, 8, 11, or 16 samples. Keep in mind that each one of these steps up will increase your render time, but it will leave you with a smoother result. For most cases, you can get away with staying with the default 8. Moving on to shading. Shading allows you to disable certain aspects of your rendering. For example, you can turn off all textures if you have applied any kind of images or materials to your models. You can turn off shadows, such that you disable the shadows while rendering. And although you won't see it here, it would appear that this is a shadow because it's, it's all dark. However, this is actually a unlit area of the box. If we were to have multiple objects in the scene, though, you would see shadows being cast from one object to the other from the light, just like the real world. And this setting disables that. You also have things like subsurface scattering, environment maps, ray trace, and color management. We won't worry about those for the time being. For the most part, starting out, you can ignore this panel. Now, the output panel is perhaps the most important one that will affect you, and this allows you to set the image path by bringing up the file manager to where you would like to save your image or animation. You can change the format that you wish to save to. So if you're rendering an animation, you would choose a movie format. And then allows you obviously to render in black and white or black and white values, RGB, RGB alpha, file extensions, overwrite, placeholders, etc. Then you also have a performance, post-processing, and stamp tab that for the most part you can go ahead and ignore. But if you would like to see some details on your render, if you enable the stamp, you can set things like the time, the date, the render time, and whatnot to see some of these details overlaid on the image when you render it. As you can see down here when we scroll out to see the full image. So that's very, very basic rendering within Blender. If you wish to render out an animation, you would obviously click the animation field, which would then save it out either as individual images for each frame or as a single movie if you've selected a movie format and will save out that animation to the selected path here. Of course that animation 
references the frame layers or the frame range and frame rate that you have set here. So by default, it would render out 250 frames of animation, which would play back at 24 frames per second. So these can all be adjusted to fit the required needs based on your project. So that's very, very basic rendering within Blender. However, currently we've not looked at how to modify any of these settings past these. You know, we haven't looked at any of the lamps. So let's go ahead and move on to the next video section where we'll look at very basic lighting so you can add more environment, color, colors, or anything that you wish to your scene to enhance your render.